Welcome to the topic, Drugs for Coagulation Disorders. What is a coagulation disorder? So coagulation disorders are nothing but the conditions that affect the blood's clotting activities. It causes the body to form too many or too few blood clots, and they're usually due to a genetic mutation and are often treatable with medications. It includes hemophilia, Hemo means blood and philia means love. And hemostasis, it is impaired when the hemo means blood flow, stasis means stops. Bleeding, the hemostasis bleeding, that is blood flow. It is the stopping of the blood flow or clotting to prevent the mm. exsanguination from the external or the internal injuries. Too much clotting is just as deadly. Hemostasis attempts to maintain the delicate balance and the several diseases and conditions, they affect the hemostasis. So in the hemostasis disorder, which is also called as the bleeding disorders, we got some problems with primary hemostasis, like the formation of the weak platelet plug and the platelet disorders occurs. We also have problems with secondary hemostasis, which is strong fibrin load through activation of intrinsic and extrinsic and common coagulation pathways. This is called as coagulation disorders. Then they affect the primary and secondary hemostasis like with the mixed platelet and a coagulation disorder is called as. So the, we did platelet disorders, coagulation disorders and the platelet and coagulation mixed disorders. What are the basic steps in hemostasis? When there is a vessel injury, there happens a vessel spasm and then all the platelets, they come adhere to the injury site and aggregate to form the plug over it. And after that, insoluble fibrin strands form and coagulate into it. What are the common symptoms after the hemostasis? Easy bruising, ecmiosis, that is the blackness of the part, hemarthrosis, deep tissue hematomas, posterior epistaxis, GI bleeding, urinary bleeding, persistent bleeding after surgical procedures, and intracerebral hemorrhage, stroke, or intracrine. This order is commonly treated with the coagulation modifier drugs. If angina is a condition or a disorder, then the pain caused by narrowing of the coronary vessels, which interferes with the blood flow to the cardiac muscles. Then we can use the coagulation modifier drugs for that. If a person gets a cerebrovascular accident stroke, that is CVA, what happens? The clot within an artery that blocks the blood flow to the brain. In the deep vein thrombosis, DVT, clot within a vein in the legs occur. In dwelling devices, the mechanical heart valves and the stunts. Myocardial infarction, there is means the death of the cardiac muscle tissue caused by the blockage of a coronary artery by a clot. Post-operative hemorrhage means bleeding followed by a surgical procedure. Pulmonary embolus means a clot within a pulmonary artery which blocks the blood flow to the lungs. Then we have the valvular heart disease, the disease of the heart valves or the replacement of the heart valve. Then what about the coagulation cascade? It is the series of the steps that occurs during the formation of a blood clot after the injury by activating a cascade of proteins called the clotting factors. And there are three pathways, intrinsic, extrinsic, and a common pathway for clotting. So these are the pathways, intrinsic pathway here. We have collagen, calicarin, and HMWK. They go and they act on our Hageman factor name number 12. So we have some blood factors in our body. They are given number in a Roman language, that new Roman numerals. So it's 12, is getting converted to 12A. Then this 12A will go and act on the 11, it will convert to 11A. 11 combines with the calcium, goes on to here, and number 9 will be converted to the 9A. 9A is going to act on the number 10, but from the other side, the thrombin is acting on number 8 factor, going to the 8A, and then going together number 8. Number 10. So number 10 is converting to 10A. On the other side, 
the series of steps in the response to bleeding, which is caused by the tissue injury. Each step activates the next and ultimately produces a blood clot, like secondary hemostasis. So what happened externally, extrinsic pathway, when there is a damage to the endothelial tissue, always a tissue factor has a number three factor. It is now damaging and converting into the 3A. On the other side, number seven is also getting towards the 7A. So they all get combined and they target onto a common pathway. That way it is called as common Intrinsic, like inside the body, inside the cell, what is happening? Outside the cell, that is what is happening. They all go and combine to the factor number 10 of the blood. They convert it into 10A. And from the other side, the rest of the number 10 is converted to 10A. So that 10A factor is going to combine with the calcium. And from the other side, the thrombin is converting number 5 to 5A. They both are going to combine to get the number 2 to 2A. Two so what is 2A? 2A is nothing but a thrombin. So thrombin means they're going to make a clot. So that thrombin number 2A factor is going to convert number 1 factor to 1A and 1A is called as nothing but the fibrin. Fibrin is kind of the thread-like fibers, which is before when the blood is going to clot. From the other side, a stabilizing factor number 13 also takes the thrombin and convert it to 13A and also combines with the calcium and 1A and they all make a stable fibrin clot, which is a real clot. So when we say here, it is what is A, B, C, D, E. So coagulation disorders, it can either cause excessive or inadequate clotting. So deficiency in less than or equal to one clotting factor, they will call, let's say number A. So this is number A and this is number D. If this factor is not present in the body, if there is a deficiency of this factor in anyone's body, then a person will have hemophilia A or it will have von Willebrand disease. If anyone is having the deficiency of B, hemophilia B, so B is over here at number nine. So if number nine factor is not available in anyone's body, then he person will be having hemophilia B disorder. Then we have C. C is hemophilia C. That is number 11. And then E is called as the vitamin K deficiency. So it's a lot of these things. If you do not have these factors, it means they are causing the vitamin K, de K deficiency. Or vitamin K deficiency in your body, they can not produce these ones. If they will not be produced, then the finally there will be no, it will be a late formation of the clot. That's why you have a bleeding disorder. That's why we got all the bleedings because of the deficiency of any of one or less than any of these clotting factors. Next, now when the clot is formed, we are saying removing a blood clot is essential to restore the normal circulation. So now primary steps in the fibrinolysis. Now they are saying there is a clot a clot in the vessel contains inactive plasminogen. Now, there are some plasminogen activators. They will act on that clot and the plasminogen converted to the plasmin, which will digest the clot. So we give the drugs to the patient. If a person is having a clot in a body, we will give them plasminogen activators, which will convert the plasmin and we will take away the clot. Then... If it's not acting properly, then we can also give them some after plasminogens to convert into plasmin. We can add thrombolytics. For example, the name of the drug is l -taplase. On the other side, if a person is having a lot of bleeding and we have to stop the bleeding, then we will be using hemostatics, which is like amino caproic acid, which is inhibited. If you want to make a plasmin, give l -taplase. If we do not want to make a plasmin, then we'll give the amino caproic acid. Again here, they're telling you, for example, this one is a damaged blood vessel. So there is a cut and the blood is oozing out. Injury to the vessel lining triggers the release of clotting factors. So immediately the blood is going to, the, the vessel is going to break and the blood clotting factors, they start coming up, starting from one to all 30. So all these clotting factors, they will come out. But on the other side, the prothrombin in the body will also come out. And prothrombin will combine with thrombin 
And on the other, the, prothrom the thrombin will convert to fibrinogen, to fibrin. Now, fibrinogen is nothing but a soluble part. What is happening when these all blood cells are coming out on the top of the injury, they will make a platelet plug there. Actually, the vasoconstriction is happening and it limits the blood flow and the platelets form a sticky plug onto the skin surface. Then that fibrin is formed and then fibrin, you can see it's kind of a three-dimensional network. It's a strands, they adhere to the plug to form an insoluble clot. So that is the real phenomena, what happens when there is a clotting occurs in the, at the blood vessel injury. Again, we see here normal blood vessel, it's getting injured and then there is a platelet plug formation and finally that is covered with an insoluble clog that is called as the clot. Now, what are the drugs they are used to modify the coagulation factor? coagulation process, what we use them here? Anticoagulants. Now, if the clot is formed and we do not want that clot in our body, in the parts, so we will use anticoagulants. They are used to prevent the formation of clots. Inhibit the specific clotting pattern in the coagulation cascade or diminish the clotting action of the platelets. They increase the normal time the body takes to form the clots. We use thrombolytics, which are used to dissolve the life-threatening clots. And we used hemostatics, which are used to speed the clot formation or to limit the bleeding from the surgical site. Then we have anticoagulants, for example, aliquis, apaxiban. They prevent the formation and enlargement of the clots in the body. Anticoagulants. They act by inhibiting certain clotting factors. They always lengthen the clotting time. They prevent the thrombi from growing, forming, or growing larger. Then there is an adverse effect, which is bleeding, and the specific blockers are administered to reverse the anticoagulant effect. Protamine sulfate is used for heparin, and vitamin K is administered for warfarin. So these two are the antidotes. Protamine sulfate is an antidote of heparin, and vitamin K is an antidote for warfarin. Next, we have how the mechanism of action occurs for the anticoagulants now. Now, this is a clot here where it is formed. We don't want that clot, so we will do the inhibition of the platelet adhesion to the injury site. We will give them clopidogrel. We do not want that clot to be made here, so we will give clopidogrel and ticlopidine drug. They act on here. If we give them the aspirin or abseximab, they are going to help in the inhibition of the platelet aggregation. They do not let the platelets aggregate. And these, they do not let the platelets adhere. Next, inhibition of clotting factors and cascades is controlled by warfarin, heparin, low molecular weight heparins, and lepidurin. Other than that, decreased blood viscosity is done by the pentoxifilin. So this one picture is showing you the whole mechanism of action for all these anticoagulant drugs. Then we have some parenteral anticoagulants like heparin, which is the traditional drug of choice. It always inactivates the thrombin and other clotting factors within the minutes of the IV administration. And to avoid the serious bleeding, activated atrial thromboplastin time, which is APTT, is always monitored. Like before in the diabetes, if a person is on insulin, we have to check the glucose levels. So the same way before giving heparin, we always have to check for the APTT levels for the patient, atrial thromboplastin time. Then we have some oral anticoagulants, warfarin, which is most frequently used. We check the prothrombin time for that. Every time we have to give the warfarin dose to a patient, we have to check the prothrombin time. Like in diabetes, we have to check the glucose levels for the patient. The normal range for the PT is from 12 to 15 seconds. And it, is, it can be prolonged with anticoagulant treatments. Then we check the international normalized ratio, which is INR. And the method of performing the PT, that is the prothrombin time test, varies from laboratory to laboratory. And this is also a PT multiplied by a correction factor. These two tests, they're done for the warfarin. And they range from 4 to 4.5 seconds post-treatment. 
Then we have antiplatelets. Antiplatelet agents prolong the bleeding time by interfering with the platelet aggregation. So antiplatelet agents like Plavix or Clopidogrel, it is used to prevent the clot formation in the arteries. Three primary subclasses of the antiplatelet agents are aspirin, adenosine diphosphate ADP receptor blockers, glycoprotein 2B3A receptor blockers. These thrombolytics, they are used to dissolve the existing clots. And these thrombolytics, they are prescribed for the disorders in which a clot has already formed. Their goal is to restore the blood flow to tissue served by the blocked vessels and their therapeutic value always increases when administered early within the first few hours of the clot formation. Risk factors include acute myocardial infarction, pulmonary embolism or the deep vein thrombosis, cerebrovascular accident which is CVA, atrial thrombosis, coronary thrombosis and to clear the thrombi in the atriovenous cannulas and blocked IV catheters. Now, what is deep vein thrombosis? We can see the deep veins of the legs. Normal blood flow goes like that. Deep vein thrombosis blood is clotted and how it is going and in embolus how it is going. So it occurs, deep vein thrombosis, it occurs when a blood clot or a thrombus forms in one or more of the deep veins in the body, usually in the legs. And it can cause the leg pain or the swelling. And sometimes there are no noticeable symptoms for that. But what are the signs? Swelling of the leg or the calf, pain that may worsen when standing or walking and warmth and redness of the leg occurs. Causes and risk factors for the deep vein thrombosis is immobility, birth control pills that you're using, might be pregnancy or postpartum. It can be genetics. It can be a factor for smoking and obesity as well. Now, there are hemostatics, which are used to promote the formation of the clots again. Hemostatics like antifibrinolytics, Actions opposite to anticoagulants shorten the bleeding time and they're very specifically used and rarely prescribed. What are the key drugs used in this whole coagulation topic? We use anticoagulants, for example, dabigatrin, original name is Pradaxa, heparin is heparin, rivaroxaban is Xeralto, and warfarin is comedin. Antifibrinolytic is the transamic acid. Antiplatelet is acetyl salicylic acid, which is aspirin, clopidogrel, which is Plavix. Glycoprotein 2B3A inhibitor, which is an antiplatelet, it's a tyrofiban. Low molecular weight heparin anticoagulant is deltaparin and enoxaparin. And thrombolytics are the altaplase and the telectaplase. So in this topic, we understood about the hemostasis as a complex process to clot the blood and the blood clot must be removed to restore the circulation. Drugs can modify the coagulation process and anticoagulants prevent the further formation of clots. Antiplatelets prevent the platelet aggregation and thrombolytics dissolve the clots. Hemostatics, they promote the formation of the clots. Thanks for watching.